Our learning intention for today is that we are learning to use efficient mental strategies for subtraction. We know that we can break numbers into smaller bits and we can use that to our advantage when doing subtraction. For example, we know that 63 minus 7 could also be thought of as 63 minus 3 minus 4 because it's easy to subtract 3 from 63 and then it's easy to subtract 4 from a multiple of 10, such as 60. But what about when we've got a bigger number that we are subtracting? We can use the same idea. Let's say we have 57 minus 21. We could count backwards, but that's a little too tricky, especially because we're working with a bigger number. But what we could do is to split this number into two easier to work with pieces. So we would um, rewrite our equation as 57 minus, and now what are we gonna do? Well, we've got tens and units, and it makes sense to split it into tens and units. It's easy to just take tens away, and it's easier to just take units away. So let's do that. So let's break this into 20 and one. So we're still taking 21 away. We're just doing it in 20 and one. So that makes things a lot more easy for us. So now I can take, now I'm just going to work on 20 my, uh, 57 minus 20. So I'm just actually looking at this first digit here in the tens column because there's nothing to worry about in the units column. So that would be 57 minus 20 is uh, 37 minus, what do we have left? We haven't dealt with the one yet. So I'm still working with the one. I've kept these red, so I'm tracking what I'm doing with this 21. Okay, so I'm now just left with this one, which that's easy enough to solve. 37 minus 1, well, that's just 36. Nice and easy. We could also visualise this problem on a number line. So I've got my this problem I'm starting with, 57 minus 21, and I've broken 21 into smaller pieces here. So now I've got 57 minus 20 minus 1. I could think about this on a number line. So I'm going to do that now. So I am going to find 57. So it's 55, 2 up to 55, 55, 56, 57. And I'm going to jump back in two lots of 10 because this is two tens. It's easy to jump back in two tens. So I'd be going back to, so I'd be taking away, oh, taking away 10, not taking away 11, taking away 10 to get to 47 and taking away another 10 to get to 37. Now I've dealt with this 20 and I need to do the one now. Now I just take away one, that's just a little jump there, which leads me to 36. That's exactly what I did here. I've just visualized it. Let's do another one. This time, let's do 81. Nope. Let's do another one. This time, let's do 81 minus 35. So let's start by doing exactly the same thing that we've been doing so far. So I would like 81 minus, and we're going to be taking away this in two parts. So let's break it into tens and units. 30 minus 5. Okay, we can do that. So now let's take 30 away from 81. So I just need to think about this tens column. So 81 minus 30 should be 51, and it is. So 51, but I have not finished yet. That's not my solution yet, is it? So 51 minus, so I've just dealt with the 30. So now I'm still dealing with the five. Okay, now um, I could count backwards at this point, but in my head, it's actually easier if I split this up a little bit more. Remember that if we get this number here to a multiple of 10, it's easier to subtract from. Right now, 51 is not a multiple of 10. We know it's a multiple of 10 if it has a zero at the end. So what do I need to do to make this a multiple of 10? Well, I need to subtract the one. I can get one out of here. So let's rewrite this once more. So now I've got 51 minus one minus four. Okay. We can do this. So I've still got the five here. It's just in a one and a four. So now I've got, so I'll take away the one. So now I've got 50 minus four. This is a nice, easy, uh, this is a nice, easy question. Now I can get a solution. And so that is, so 10 minus four is six. So 50 minus four is 46. 
And that is my solution. Now, I've got a few different steps here and it might look a little bit tricky on the page, but actually doing this in my head wouldn't take nearly as long because I'm not writing it out. It's helpful to write it out because it's really good practice. Let's do a worded problem. Harrison had $65 in his pocket. He bought a board game for $37. How much money does he have left? So what are we actually trying to do there? Well, we're trying to find out how much money he has at the end. He started with $65. And at some point, he subtract, he spent some money, so he got rid of some. He got rid of $37. Okay. And we would like to find out the solution. Okay, so I want to split $37 into two easier to work with pieces. So let's just work down the page then. So 60, so we'll have still got 65. We haven't done anything to that yet. And we're going to take away $30, because we're breaking it into tens and units. $30 minus $7. Now we can, this is looking like something which is a little bit easier to do in our heads, but I'm going to do it on the page still because it's easier to show you that way instead of doing it in my head. So now I need to take 30 from 65. Now I need to subtract 30 from 65. Six minus three, it's three. So 65 minus 30 is $35. And I've still got this $7 over here. Now this looks like something that we can do as well. So I'm going to go up here because I've run out of space on my page. And I'm going to split this seven into something that's a little bit more easy to work with. I could count backwards, but that's not the most efficient way. And remember, we're doing this for efficiency. We are mathematicians. So we've still got 35. I haven't subtracted the seven yet. $35 minus... So what do I need to get to this number, this $30 to $5 here to get to a multiple of 10? I need to subtract five. So I need to pull five out of the seven and that'll leave me with $2 left over. Okay, now in my mind, this is nice and easy. I can go now 35 minus five, which will take me down to $30. And now I've just got to deal with this $2 here. So now this is nice and easy. I just need to count backwards off with using my addition facts. I know that 10 minus two is eight. So my solution here is $28. And because it's given, the question is given to me in word form, I should write this as a worded answer and remember my units of measure. So my solution is Harrison has $28 left. In this video, we have looked at a more efficient strategy for subtracting larger numbers mentally. And that strategy is to split the tens and the units, and then we can even split the units even further.